you started in 2004 Pershing Square with, I think, $54 million. So if yes. somebody had invested in 2004 part of that $54 million and they kept it with you, what kind of compounded a rate of return would they have today? Uh, you would have about 11 times your money and, and about a 16% IRR. Okay. And are, are there people that have done that, that kept their money there the whole time? Yes. The, lo the, the very loyal ones. It's not been a straight okay. line up, to be clear. Okay. So let's talk about, for a moment, um, some of the campaigns you've done as activists. Some of them have worked out. Some have not. Uh, Chipotle has, seems to have worked out. But you did a couple that were difficult ones, or Herbalife or Valiant. Uh, they didn't work out. What would you say is the mistake you made in hindsight and that you would try to avoid in the future? Sure. So there's sort of eight principles that have driven our investment success. And when we have veered from those eight principles, uh, we've lost money. And uh, after the uh, 2000, we went through a very difficult period, circa 2015, 2016, the two investments you mentioned were big drivers of that. It was, uh, you know, if you will, experiences making mistakes and learning from them. And it was a moment of reflection for the firm. And I went back to the core principles that have driven our success for the first 12 years. And I had a member of the investment team literally engrave them in a stone tablet, not dissimilar from Moses' Ten Commandments. And I had that stone tablet put in a, what you might call a deal toy, it sits on everyone's desk in the office. And uh, we've adhered to those principles you know, ever since. And you know, we've been fortunate uh, to return to you know, the success we had for the first uh, dozen years. So I think it's about keeping to you know, our, our principles are basically, we want to invest in simple, predictable, free cash flow generative dominant companies with large barriers to entry that are in high returns on capital, that have limited exposure to extrinsic risk we can't control, strong balance sheets, don't need access to capital to survive, have excellent management, good governance. Sounds logical, um, but you know, occasionally we've diverged. And there's uh, those times, you know, there's a certain discipline that comes with investments and there always seems to be a countervailing quality that caused us to diverge. Uh, but in really each case where we've compromised on business quality or complexity, we've been harmed uh, from an investment standpoint. To be an activist investor, my impression is you have to be a fairly tough person. You can't be a shy, retiring person because people are going to criticize you. So did you develop a thick skin relatively early? And do you feel OK being confrontational at times? Or is that a problem because you're just not your personality? Sure. I'm generally not a confrontational person. You know, I had my, my one little episode with Carl Icahn on CNBC that had a, uh, got a fair amount of attention. Um, you know, I didn't actually choose to debate Carl Icahn on television. The, you know, the, to the credit of the network, they, they brought him on in the middle of an interview like this one where we both had an opposing point of view, uh, you know, on an investment. I, I do think it's a strategy that requires a thick skin. But, you know, I think uh, anyone who takes high profile positions, not just on investments, but on any issue, particularly at this moment in history, is gonna get slammed by one side of the debate. It's the inherent nature of a, of a divisive country and you know, fairly strong opinions on both sides. But I, I've always had the view that if you take you know, a public strong position that you have a lot of conviction in, you're gar and no one, you know, no one pays attention, then maybe there isn't that much substance to what you have to say. So I, I, I guess I take it as, favorable and, and can also often be instructive to hear the opposing point of view uh, as long as it's not an ad hominem criticism you know I have, I have no objection to someone taking the opposing point of view at all let's talk 